how many pods are on this thing. Look at these. So many, so many pods. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Dave Stone again with another exciting episode of Develop Awesome Skills. And first I just want to say thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters. If you guys do want to support me, go to patreon.com forward slash develop awesome skills and let's plant some more trees together. But today I have such an exciting episode for you. I'm here with Craig McDonald again. Back who, again. Back again. And we, we showed you guys his yard when it was flourishing in the middle of summer. And now behind us is the winter, the winter, uh, uh, winter. Winter, winter, exactly, <laughs> garden of all the moringas. So we're gonna be chopping it all down today, but uh, I wanted, yeah, how, how, is, how have they been growing? Uh, they, you know, they kept growing since we did the last video. Um, all these pods they put on, um, but I've found that if you don't cut them back, then they just get really leggy and you can see they're getting really heavy with pods and it's just time for them to go, you know? Yeah, they're getting so heavy with so pods. So we gotta cut them back. Um, so that they push out, you know, for the new for the spring. Okay. And grow the way that we Sweet. want them to, you know. Absolutely. Nice so, uh, so are, are these are these seeds gonna be be viable when they dry out, or are they are they not viable until they dry out on the tree? Uh, good question. I've never actually. That'd be a cool experiment to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. If I we wonder. did that, yeah, I know no. like some of the ones are like fully developed. They haven't dried though. Right. Like you know. These yeah. Ones. Like these are the one right behind you. Like this. Oh, like yeah. they're. I think these might be good. I don't know. Yeah, well, they'll probably dry these. out when you, after we cut them down, you right. put a pile, and then when they start opening up, maybe. I mean, we'll it'd be interesting to try, you know. Totally. So, yeah, definitely give it a shot. Oh yeah, yeah it's see? green in there right now. Yeah, pretty green. So there's. Those still, would probably work. Maybe. You could you could try it. Let's eat them. You guys know if you eat seeds, it makes everything sweet for the next like five minutes. They're very astringent though. <laughs> yeah. It takes a second and then you're like, whoa. Ooh. Some yeah. people, it's like an acquired taste. Yeah. Some people really like it. That's funny. Yeah, that's intense. <laughs> <laughs> Those seeds are intense. Yeah, it sneaks up on you. <laughs> it's kind of like that wasabi kick at the end. Yeah. Right, right, like down through the throat and then like hits the stomach. It's, it sucks that we gotta cut them down. It's too bad. Start from the driveway and work our way in. Okay. Because we're gonna be bringing stuff back that yeah, way anyways. Okay. So then we'll clear, kind of that clear the way out yep. as we come. All right, sweet. Then, I'm very excited. I, I, I'm always happy when I come to Craig's house. Look at all these flowers on here. Flowers are delicious too. The bees really love them, and so do I. But look at this little miniature pod. Little mini guy. It's sort of starting to crack open. Let's see this. Oh, nice. These seeds are actually viable. Plant those seeds. And then on the inside of this pod, when they're dry out, you can see this white stuff all along the inside. Well, this stuff kind of tastes like uh, a rice cake if, if you eat it like this. Not bad. It's actually better when they're all the way dry. This one's a little bit of moisture, but these seeds look good. So we're gonna save these seeds for planting. What makes them viable? Well, the color. So the color makes them viable because you can see when they're, they're gonna be green or white inside when they're not mature. But when they turn mature, they turn brown. So you want the brown seeds on the inside. And they're- fungus growing? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the mark of a healthy soil right there. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like dog puke. It is. <laughs> it's called dog vomit uh, fungus. So you planted all these tree colors like everywhere, huh? Yeah. It's because she gave me all these cuttings and we just put them in, uh, uh, what's it called? Root hormone. Oh, yeah. Like they work pretty good? In yeah. The they pretty much have all taken. There's one there. There's one over there. And then the, uh, 
the low quad over there too. Is this your Aura Vipa? Yeah. Yeah, so it's starting to, find, it's pushing out new growth. Yeah, it is. Too. My Aura Vipa, I think it's pushing out some flowers. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've yet to get flowers on either of them. Yeah, see, here's tree collards. Pumpkin, Marcus Pumpkin. Yeah, look at this guy, dude. Look at that leaf. And new growth. So this will be its going into year three, I think. Yeah, it's got nice little buds everywhere on it. Whoa, yeah, this one grew a lot on the top. <laughs> That's a whole new top since I saw it last. Yeah, so this one, yeah, this will be going into year three as of March. So it's the end of year two in the ground from three gallon. From but three gallon. It's, it's doing great. Yeah, it's doing so good, so yeah, green. Three gallon. You imagine it was like this tall and it was like, it looked like a, one of these side branches. Yeah. That's how thick it was, you know, just a, little yeah with this one I have an apricot right there so I want to get rid of this this whole arm right here all right so to allow more Sun to go here um, then I'm gonna take off this branch because it's growing into the center okay. of the canopy right and then I'm gonna cut this one probably pretty high maybe right back to where I cut it last year all right and then the ones on this side I'm gonna cut lower to um, have more of a lower. Yeah, this was a multi trunk, to, man. Right, to make uh, easier for harvesting. Okay, sweet. So this will be more for like harvesting leaves, um, probably next year. Awesome. You know? So what's your first cut? Um, maybe we'll start with this. There it is. First cut. No, we're just gonna let it drop, basically. Like that. Yeah. And then we'll, and then we'll make a clean cut later. Okay. That was so easy. It's very light wood. It's so heavy with all the pods on them. Decisions, decisions. Yeah, that's, that's good. This thing's gonna immediately branch out and cover this. I kind of almost want to take this whole thing out, but. Maybe we'll just use this side to just continuously harvest. Okay. done this one's done that's a proper pruning of a moringa well well you get to choose how you prune <laughs> yeah but so, uh, like the reason I'm leaving this one longer because it's gonna grow out and get my way over here so I might end up cutting this back again who knows but yeah you can always cut more off you can't cut less off right. so that big moringa tree like that goes down to that and then we're gonna dig this one out completely. yes I'm excited about that. We're gonna see what the taproot looks like on a pretty big moringa. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Oh boy. Yeah, you're gonna have more than <laughs> garden workout. All right, so I know you guys know about Moringa if you're watching my channel right now, but uh, but I just want to share a few facts of Moringa with you because we got these big, huge branches that we're chopping down, and there's so many uses for each one of these. I want to show you a couple things here. So this is a seed pod that's actually already dried out, which is a perfect seed pod that's viable for seeds. Um, and when you open it up, you see those dark, dark brown seeds. 
Those are amazing. Um, these are very viable seeds. So I'm gonna save these seeds so we can plant these, and put them off to the side in my pocket. And then, but here's a, here's a branch of the Moringa. And you can see this is off a very mature tree because there's super thick pods. Um, Indians like to use these pods for curries. So what you would do is you would shave off the outside uh, fibrous part and you chop it into pieces and then you can cook it up in a curry and it's delicious. And then when you, when you harvest these leaves, they're really tasty. It's like a green. But when you harvest the leaves, you dry them out. You can get a little dehydrator. Make sure you dry them out less than 120 degrees, like 118 degrees to keep it raw. But you just dry it out, threw it through a blender, and you got some powder for your smoothies. So, um, so many uses to this tree, but we are doing a Moringa Massacre today. We are chopping down Craig's Forest. The cool thing about the seeds is when you use the seeds, you can either plant the seeds, you can eat the seeds, or you can, um, you can uh, extract oil from the seeds. The Moringa oil is inside the seeds and it's very, very healthy oil. Um, it's really good for the skin, um, really, really good to cook with, but it's expensive so it's hard to cook with it because you can't buy that much of it. And then the other things that the seeds do is if you grind the seeds up after you extract the oil, the cake left from the seeds will purify water. It acts as a coagulant, so people in, in uh, third world countries can grind some seeds up, throw it in a five gallon bucket of muddy river water and all of the particles will coagulate to the seeds. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature too. Moringa is also used really good for fertilizer because it's the most nutrient dense plant on the planet. So we're, um, if you, you can use it as what's called a green, a green manure. A green manure uh, is basically just a fertilizer that's made up of greens. And so Moringa is the most nutrient dense plant on the planet. So if you use that as a green fertilizer, then um, it will help all your plants grow. So what we're gonna do with the thinner branches is we're gonna throw them through a wood chipper and he's gonna chip up all the, the, the small branches after we harvest the leaves. The leaves are gonna be harvested to eat and dry out. The flowers are gonna be harvested for a, sec a different purpose. And then the, the small branches we're gonna chip up and put around his property for more wood chips, but the larger, thicker branches, I'm gonna plant as cuttings. And so we're gonna see how all that stuff goes too, but it'll grow. Just take a cutting, throw it in the dirt, boom. It's good to amend the soil a little bit, but uh, you can just throw it in the dirt and it'll still grow. So. All right, now we're on a ladder. Yeah, this is where it gets tricky. Yeah, this is where we get into Widowmaker territory. <laughs> So it basically feeds the yard, it keeps them all the roots like protected and safe and keeps them at a good temperature so that there's like a nice environment for it. And it keeps it good through the winter and through the summer, so it keeps it cool in the summer and warm in the winter. And then it's also a good way to recycle everything and so not really wasting the time. Alright, so you guys see how, how tall he's he's cutting that tree. It's actually probably about eight foot tall now. So that's where the canopy is going to start this time. So as he raises the canopy up, these trees are going to get taller and taller. So <laughs> can't wait to see next year. Protecting the orange of the ladder for that big. Protected. So when you have a really dense food forest like Craig, the, the hard part about trimming trees is when you pull the branch down, it doesn't crush your other trees. So it's all about maneuvering and protecting all the trees around the Moringas. That's the big boy up there, he's cutting now. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Woo. Oh. Yes. I, was I was worried for a second. <laughs> a little bit high on that one. Well, I am just bunching up the leaves. These are uh, smaller branches 
we try to keep the smaller and the larger bunches, you know, separate so that they, it's just easier. And we bunch them up, rubber band them, then we rinse them, dry them, shake them dry, let them dry, and then um, grind them with a grinder till they're, you know, fine, fine, fine powder. Fine enough to go into like a, uh, I took an old uh, pepper shaker. You know, an old pepper can t uh, that came with pepper and emptied it out, cleaned it, and put mine in there so I can shake it on, uh, shake it on my food as I'm going along. So we just make little bunches like this, and then rubber band them. So we've got a little bunch, and then we put them in here, and then we rinse them off thoroughly, shake them out thoroughly, and let them dry. Yeah. And so I dry it and then we give it to our dog because he eats grass and whenever he eats the moringa, the dried moringa, he stops eating grass. It's really good for dogs and my dog loves it. These are all the beautiful trees underneath. I have this amazing white sapote that has been really taken off. It's just beautiful, huge thick trunk on this white sapote. But it's under the canopy of the moringa. We just don't want to hurt it when we prune these trees. So the year one, we cut it right here. You can see that's the original cut. Oh, okay. And then last year, well, actually, maybe that's two years, because then there's all these like little knots. Oh yeah. See where it's kind of healed over itself, and uh -huh. then it keeps growing from the same spot. So this year, I'm cutting it a little higher, because this is kind of what they do to mulberry trees around Phoenix. You know when they have those like knots? Oh yeah. But it's uh, it's actually not healthy for the tree because you know it keeps pushing out um, from the same spot. From the same spot. I want to try and avoid cutting it in the exact same spot. Yeah. Every time, good you know? point. Pollarding. Pollarding. P, P O L L A R D. Oh okay. That's what they do when they cut it back to the same spot. Oh okay. Yeah. Got some bugs. Oh yeah! Some Look at too. that. Oh my gosh, you're not even down to clay yet. There's a worm in there. Where'd he go? Oh, look at this root. That guy. Whoa. Oh, yeah. A little cockroach. Look at this root. Oh my gosh, growing right through the wood chips, dude. Oh my gosh. Looks like a branch. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Oh yeah, this one's solid. This is gonna be tree. fun to cut This is that perp, right? Yep. Purple. The giant purple moringa. Beast. Beast man. Perfect. <laughs> Just grabbed it. Pote seeing light for the first time. Oh yeah. Good <laughs> spring light. Take out this one. This thing cuts like butter when there's no weight on it. Look at that. Cut through a friggin' orange trunk. I know. Like 20 seconds. You got the little Harbor Freight wood chipper, the same one I have, which doesn't do that big of uh, chips, but come check it out. When you smell the fresh Moringa wood chips, it smells kind of like a, a salad or something. This is pure gold, this Moringa wood chips for the garden, pure gold. If you notice in here, these, these branches are real small. They're about an inch thick. This wood chipper doesn't do branches that are bigger than about an inch, inch and a half max. 
So uh, all the larger branches, we're not going to be able to chip up. We're just going to strip them of the leaves. But for all the smaller branches, this chipper does really great. It's kind of like a garbage disposal. Just has these blades that just grind it. So uh, works really well for the smaller branches. So this is the purple Moringa. Yeah. I think the one that I'm most nervous about cutting is this. This is like the size of a small tree. Yeah. And this is a branch that I want to remove because it's kind of, it's over the apples here, you know? Uh-huh. So, and I'm going to raise, we're going to cut the purple one up there, but we're going to keep it just in this main trunk part. So we're going to get rid of this side, side branch. But yeah, I mean, this side branch is like probably 20 feet long, at least a six inch diameter branch. And this is all just this year growth, you know? Wow. I mean, the trunk has doubled in size too. It's even bigger than the last time. Yeah, this is definitely a... Like I could hide behind it. I'm not a small guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual tree now. Yeah. I love this. Um, I'm gonna take branches off the branch. Clean it up a little bit. Yeah. Lighten the load. Oh, okay. That's okay. Big will be fine. Bigs are strong. It actually is fine. Perfect. So this will be interesting. So originally, the first year, with this giant branch growing off the bottom. Yeah. Now, I think that's it. Oh yeah. You can't even see that there was a branch there. Yeah. So we're gonna make this cut right here, and in, you know, eight months, you're gonna see it just close up, just like any of these little nubs. And this is gonna be a big cut. When you do a cut, just real quick, this part right here is like called the collar. You don't wanna damage that, because that has everything that's gonna heal the cut, right? So we're gonna kinda go at an angle and just try and go just outside that cut. Okay. For that collar. And that's what I've been doing on all the cuts. Okay. Or trying to anyways. Okay. The one thing, Moringa grows so fast, it could probably just grow out of it, but especially on slower growing trees, like you want to be very careful with that. Okay. Nice clean cut. Perfect. So yeah, that's just gonna heal right over. It's just gonna. Yeah. So then I can't imagine how big this trunk's gonna be next year. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> true. We should do put a caliper on it. Like we should measure the caliper yeah. of the trunks. Yeah, we should. See how fast they grow. That would be. Uh, that'd be cool to. No, I have no idea. We'll do right now. <laughs> All right, so when you, you're cutting these branches down, you're doing it at a certain way. Right, so these big heavy branches that you can't support with your hand, uh -huh. if you just start cutting, then they crack, and then the bark will just peel down. Uh -huh. And that's what I just did here. Okay. You can see, so I messed this one up. Uh -huh. And so this is obviously not good Yeah. <laughs> on any tree. We're gonna have to cut this down obviously okay. uh, so that we have a clean cut but um, the way you do that is you do I think it's called the three cut method where you're gonna do the first cut way past where the final finishing cut will be and you kind of score the bark a little bit and do several cuts on either side so that when it snaps it does when it falls it doesn't peel the bark all the way out okay um, and so that's what I failed to do here but, so now we're just gonna have to... All right, which one are we going for next? So yeah, I'll, I'll demonstrate that one. This one will actually be a good one right here. I'm gonna cut the underside first, and then I'm gonna cut the top. Okay. And then it's gonna snap, and then, so it shouldn't peel the bark because I cut the underside. You cut the underside higher than the right. top side. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so even, I could even go like a A 
a little cut, nothing too crazy, maybe like a quarter inch or half inch. Okay. Okay. So now when it snaps, the bark's not gonna peel because it's already cut. And then we're gonna go a little bit lower. Cut behind it. Boom, just snaps right off. Okay, this is a big one. Cut the rest free. Ah. Set it. <laughs> You'll do it right so when you do the final cut now, you right? Can... So now it snapped off right here. You can't really see it, but um, so the bark didn't peel. But and this is a really rough cut, but that's okay because we're gonna cut right here. And now that all the weight's off it, I can easily make a clean cut. Um, that'll be the finishing, the last cut I make. And I'm gonna cut it right above this node here. Perfecto. There you go. Even that wasn't perfectly clean, but it's fine. Joe Rogan. <laughs> yes. We just massacred a whole bunch of moringas. Um. Yes. Yeah, do it. Cause that's a bad egg. Well, that's gonna be. That's a big boy. When we're in it, it's like, yeah, whatever. And then you step back and like, oh my God. It looks so different. <laughs> Dude, it does. It's crazy. Last branch. Big boy. We've done pretty well preserving all the other trees as we've been chopping the trees down, but there was a couple times that uh, some of the branches hit the other trees, but they're all fine. They're resilient. We protected them as good as we could. How do we do here? Off a few leaves. Oh, we still got the low quads. Low quads are holding. Took a little hit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut this whole thing off. Or paint it. I don't think I'll cut that off. Really? It'll probably heal around it. Okay. Could put something around it to protect it, like when I saw. I, don't I have, have graft. I might have grafting tape in my in my car. Oh yeah, that'll heal right over it. Graft it. As long as it's not all the way around, right. you can't break the camping layer. One, <laughs> one, thing, <laughs> one, one thing. One 
biggest ones, yeah. yeah. Oh. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. You got it. And that is the Moringa Massacre, my friends. <laughs> And in a couple more months, you're gonna see these are going to be covering, you won't even be able to see those palm trees in a couple months. So, very exciting. It's nice to have a team of people helping you out when you have this much stuff to do. Keep going. It's one great. Look at that pod, that is enormous. Yeah, that's giant. My goodness. So big. Do you work? <laughs> you got a whole team helping. Yeah, great. And I can be like when Rufus fly. <laughs> yes, what they did. Look at all the leaves. Look at all this moringa mulch. You got Nile. Moringa juicer. And Craig was saying that you run a seed pod through there once in a while, and the seed pod will lubricate the blades on there because of all the moringa oil in there. Oils it up. Oils it up. It's a good tip. So you're making powder now? We're making powder with all of this production and I just put it in my blender and I do it super fine. And then I got one of the pill making machines, kind of like your dad has. And we can make 100 at a time. The other day I made 300. I'll take 22 per day. Um, we figured out the math and it's equivalent to about one tablespoon. And I did a 30 day challenge in January to 22 a day and I felt like my mood was more even. I wasn't as irritable, so that didn't make me as mean all the time. <laughs> but I just felt really good and awesome. I felt healthy. So like, even if you only take a couple a day, it's better than not taking right. any, yeah. you know? 30 day challenge, so 22 Moringa capsules a day is about a tablespoon a day. So yeah. how, how did you take them? Did you take them all in the morning or did you split it up? So I just took them to work and then I would just take two at a time and I would just put them, I would count them off on my desk and then I just do two at a time and then by- Throughout the day. Yeah, and whenever I just took like a drink of water, it made me drink more water, yeah, right. which was great. I was drinking like a whole big cup of water more per day because I was taking them. Um, so I think my system was just moving better. Yeah. And I just felt super good. Totally. Yeah. Awesome. It was super Sweet. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it. So you got to take the 30 day challenge too. Yeah. Do it. Let us know. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right. So this is where we started the video, guys, right here. That was the opening shot right there. And now it is cleared out. Looking really good. Got a lot of branches and leaves. But it's looking awesome. So, we got the moringas in bunches, about this big, right? And then, and I'm wearing gloves because I cut myself, so keep it sanitary, right? Rinse them really good. And then it goes down the assembly line. Clean leaves. Get ready to be hanged. Oh, that's gonna fall. Nice. <laughs> and then you hang them on a hanger. And then I hang them on hangers because I have more than I need. So use what you got, right? Exactly. And then I have this thing on Oh, nice. And I just kind of jerry-rigged it to make extra oh, long yeah. things, and this comes out. Oh, check it out. And we just hang them all on here and keep them in the back oh, room, yeah. and then powder. How, how long, like a week? About a week. Oh, heck yeah. Love it. Oh, 
that's how you use the moringa after you harvest it. You clean it, shake it, hang it, dry it, and eat it. Check out all these <laughs> cuttings I got. Uh, we're gonna be uh, planting a whole bunch of cuttings. Oh, how many, think? How many okay. pounds do you think you're gonna get? Five pounds? Seven pounds? Um, we normally get like two to three pounds. So we'll probably get, I'd say around 10. Maybe. Yeah, I think you'll get around 10 pounds. Depending on how many of the rabbits eat on the bottom. You leave the ones on the bottom for the rabbits? <laughs> It's a great little uh, rack. Yeah, it works pretty good. It's an old like desk. Nice rack. <laughs> nice rack <bro. laughs> so I gotta say that it is really warm out today. Uh, we are sweating up a storm, cutting these trees down. But uh, thank you so much guys for watching. If you like this video, give me a big green thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Hit that little subscribe button so you can see when I'm posting more of these cool videos. But uh, check out Craig's house now. We just cut everything down. So now we're finishing up processing all the moringa over here and uh, cutting everything up and cleaning up the house. But uh, it was such an awesome time. Um, super, super excited to have a whole bunch of cuttings. I got two new uh, moringa trees now that we pulled out from the roots. I'm gonna plant them at Stonehaven. We're gonna see how they do. So also thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters. If you guys do wanna support me, go to patreon.com forward slash develop awesome skills and let's plant some more trees together. So also go to the I Want More Moringa Facebook group and join because we're planting a million moringas in five years. So you can be part of the movement, part of the action. Um, but uh, a couple of these moringa cuttings are gonna be part of those million. So plant your moringa cuttings. All right guys, until next time, develop awesome skills. Love you.